with a super sneaky bike exploit, we're busting into those off-limits areas to grab three epic weapons. The US 556, the MG45, and the Superior Metal Axe. We're breaking all the rules and entering the Iron Butte and Crater Lake regions way before we're supposed to. Son of a bitch! We just got to Lost Lake with an injured boozer on day 754, but it gets even crazier. Going after the MG45 is no joke, because the Ripper that has it will be using it against Deke. We'll have to take down this major threat to get our hands on that weapon. And guess what? We're doing all of this in just nine and a half hours of in-game time. So sit back, smash that like button, and get ready for an adventure that defies the limits of Days Gone. We're going for broke. All right, brace yourself, because this is where the nightmare begins. The Nero checkpoint at Santium Tunnel, completely blocked. The Rogue Tunnel, skirting the edge of Ripper territory, barricaded beyond belief. And this narrow pass, fortified to the teeth. But right here, this very spot and that rock wall over there, they're our only shot to reach our destination. I'll say spoilers for the quote, first playthrough crowd, because there are portions of the game map here that you might only want to experience as the story goes along. Okay, you've been warned. Now let's get some amped up firepower and blow this game wide open. Our first task, climb up this rock wall. Now you don't need nitrous or any special acceleration to do it. Deke's legs of steel will more than be capable of taking you up there. So don't worry about it. Just ride and literally walk your way up those rocks. For part two of the trick is to hit the rock wall at the right angle. You'll know because Deke will be almost vertical as he's powering his way up that side of the cliff. Okay, here we go. This upcoming first stop will be the hardest of this whole mission because it's a Nero checkpoint controlled by Rippers. And our target is a Ripper Heavy who has the big gun that we want. All right, we made it. So now I'm just gonna use the high ground here and the rocks for cover so that the heavy doesn't see me. All I'm looking to do is sneak in and get our ripper heavy to come after now. us. And this is why, if you're wondering, why did I change weapons here? Well, this gun will make a lot of noise. And since the Ripper is the closest one to us, I want him coming after us first. There we go. Okay, I think they're pissed off now. Yeah, he already tried firing off a shot, but I'm hidden. And I plan to stay hidden. Okay, that's not our heavy. That's just one of the band. Right this way. Thank you so much. So there are ledges that these folks can climb up to to get to this level. And I'm just scoping the area out to make sure that we get the heavy up here. Because that's the only guy I care about. <laughs> okay. Is that it? Oh yeah. Now this weapon is devastating. Only a few shots, because I'm playing on hard too. So it won't take too many shots by this weapon to get killed. So I'm using the rock. 
and he's a right-handed shot so he's going to be shooting to my left so anytime i can keep my left flank covered it'll be helpful come on come on come on i don't want to waste too much whoops yikes okay Whew. finally jesus I just want to slow him up a bit. Give me time to get my weapons. See right there, perfect. That that rock is taking all the shots. Now he is covered with headgear, and we got to get that off first. So there we go. Nice. Okay, this is our mission. MG45. It takes the place of our crossbow and our arsenal, but we don't care. We've just traded maybe a silent killer for essentially a nice horde-killing crowd-pleaser. So that's a good trade-off as far as I'm concerned. Now, the rest of this area, this checkpoint, I don't care. I'm here to get the guns and get out. We're off to the races and over to the Iron Butte Horde. Because over there is another weapon waiting for us to just nab it. This is going to be... <laughs> this this gun and the melee weapon are going to be the easiest. This one's going to be a, a little bit of a challenge because i got to ride through ripper territory. And there are a bunch of rippers roaming through the area. Coming over to this region this early doesn't mean that it's empty. It's actually populated with a bunch of rippers and a bunch of marauders. And, like I said, as we get to them, the Iron Butte Horde is actually available. But that's not the goal. We're not sightseeing. Forget that. that. I'll save the sightseeing for another video. Yeah, what the hell. Okay. The person set themselves on fire to come after me on a bike. Now, if you're watching me ride here, yeah, this is the top speed of the bike. I haven't upgraded it since the start of the game. I playthrough is bare bike minimum okay this is as fast as we're gonna go which kind of sucks but for the, even for the purposes of getting these items it's fine we don't need to worry about it okay so here's the iron butte horde area and that truck and they are in the background there Oof, not gonna take those guys on but there we go. We're going to trade our SAF. That's the route. There we are. Iron Butte Horde location. And we picked up a nice gun. Because it's got a lot of capacity. That'll help. Of course, one of the biggest downsides of having these weapons that you're just picking up out in the field is that because they're not purchased, they won't show up in your locker. It doesn't matter. You can only carry them and never even store them away. So if you lose them, you're out of luck. And if you decide to drop the weapon to pick up something else that might be more advantageous in that moment or for that mission, just remember where you dropped it because the only way you're gonna keep it is to pick it up again until you get to the point in the game where you can actually purchase the weapon and then permanently store it in your locker. For right now, of course, we're using the exploit to pick up some pretty awesome weapons. We already got two early, so that when we head back to Lost Lake and continue the story, oh, we've Jesus got a little bit Another of an advantage dealing beach. with some of those situations. Now, those of you who have been watching where I've been riding, we just came from the Iron Butte Horde area and have driven to a Ripper camp. This camp is the location from which we can now access the Crater Lake region. And we're going to do it in a very similar way that we did when we got here into Iron Butte. We're going to use Deacon's Legs of Steel to climb up some rocks and gain access to a whole other region. Not just Iron Butte, but a whole section of the map that we can't even look at if you're on map view and you try and you move your cursor at this point in the game after arriving at Lost Lake, you can't even move the cursor south to see this region. Here we go. 
Fix legs of steel. Climb up the rocks. You don't need to accelerate. You don't need nitrous. You just need to make sure Deke's in shape. He's been eating his vegetables. Got his spinach. And I just missed the final turn to make this a straight shot. But this improvised maneuver does the job. We're up and over. And now we're heading into the southern region. Completely inaccessible at this point in the game when you've just arrived to Lost Lake. You can't even move the cursor when you're in map mode. You can't even move the cursor south. It won't let you. It'll just stop. We've gone completely rogue and are now literally off the map. Now it's very important in this part of the region because we're not supposed to be here, there is one little hiccup that could really mess up your day. And we're approaching it just now. On your right is a bit of snow that looks a little odd. In fact, you can see under it right there. The whole point of that being is that, hey, you're not supposed to be here. The world ends, don't you know? It may, but we've got a solution for that. And as we approach it, the snow will change. Boom, right there. That's when it became unaccessible to accessible. So now everything's solid. We're good to go in this part of the world. And as we round this rock, there we go. There's Diamond Lake and Wizard Island in the background. Now follow the route here. Just take it slow and you'll see the weirdest thing as you come over. Oh, we're in midair. How about that? Oh, and down. Son of a bitch. Now depending on how you land will determine whether you're dead or you gotta repair the bike or Deke takes a lot of damage. It's a pretty high cliff that we just fell off probably worth your time to make a save just before we crossed over that weird snow. Regardless, we're on our way to pick up the best melee weapon in the game. And there are actually two in this area around Diamond Lake. I'm heading to my preferred location because there's a very important item that I'll need after I pick this up. There we are, Superior Metal Axe. 100% stats on everything. Amazing. Add to that the field repair skill from the melee section of the skill tree, and all you'll need is an adequate supply of scrap to keep this puppy in top shape for battle through the rest of the game. Before you run off thinking, great, got the guns, got the best melee weapon, time to scram. And I'm totally with you on that, which is why I chose this site. With the abysmal fuel capacity on this version of the bike, this is the most direct line that I can get the melee weapon and access to a gas can in that cabin so I can keep it topped up enough to just get to the next gas can location. Now I usually kinda check my weapons Make sure all's locked and loaded before picking up the ammo. Use this. And then heading over and just nabbing that gas can and getting it out there. Of course, it then begs the question, wouldn't it just be better to fill up at the encampment? Well, the encampments require credits. <laughs> and since we just arrived at this location, I currently have no credits to use. Even worse, seeing as we're not supposed to be here in this section of the map yet, this. at this point in the game, here's a little tidbit of info. That's it. You can't turn in bounties. There's nobody there to collect them. The only person at Diamond Lake Encampment is the mechanic, Lucas. Needless to say, the most efficient route is to head to the campsite, pick up the melee weapon, go to the cabin, grab the cast can, fill it up, get this bike in gear, and hightail it out of here to get back and across the mountains to Lost Lake. In a similar scenario where everything's blocked and you can't get 
into the southern region, that's the same problem going back out. The tunnels are jammed. That cliff that we fell off of to get in here is definitely not going to be accessible for us to climb back that way and go back out. Just not going to happen. No worries though, because I'm pretty sure you can guess by now. The way we got in, climbing over rocks with Deke on the bike, is going to be the way we get out. Being the daytime, we've been lucky we haven't run into too many freakers because they mostly come out at night, mostly. And um, we're just making a straight shot. So there's Wizard Island in the background right there, but we're, we're, we're bypassing that. We're not going near that. We got to get home. We got to get lickety split out of here. And we want to spend as little time as possible in the evening when the freakers are roaming at their worst. always being cautious even traveling on the roads which in this particular case is the most straight shot way to get to our escape route but we still gotta watch out as you can see we just passed a bunch of marauders just kinda of waiting for us to tackle us and do some damage but if you're careful you shouldn't have too much trouble As I mentioned, when you enter the region, you don't have any money and you don't have any trust, obviously, because you're not even supposed to be here. But if you look in the distance, there's smoke. So that means there are ambush cams waiting to be attacked. On another playthrough, you could come out here and build up some trust and build up some credits that you could actually use in the region before you even have anything to do with the main game. Zone. I gotta burn this shit down, make it safer. Now it's worth noting that because I'm on the crappiest bike, even riding through water will cause a little bit of damage. And if you notice on the bottom right, there's the two gauges that tell us our fuel status and the mechanical status of the bike. It's definitely something you'll want to keep an eye on, especially early game when you haven't had a chance to get the credits to upgrade the bike, give it a stronger frame, because every little ding, every little collision, especially when you don't know how to drive, every hit of a freaker will just add to the damage. And look at this. Oh, so many gas cans, but there's just too many freakers and possibly marauders that I just don't have an interest in dealing with right now. I'm on the clock, gotta focus, get back to Lost Lake, and continue the story. Besides, there's at least one more location for a gas can that I know I can access pretty easily compared to the swarm that I would have had to dealt with over at the Beaver Marsh rest stop, so not gonna do that. Good old Marvel parlance. The sun's getting low, and we just gotta worry about the freakers starting to come out. But having that gun definitely was better than the SAF or even just the crossbow. That would have been pretty bad. And on this bridge, where you've noticed I picked up the gas can, will be the last time we fill up on this trip. That, that'll be more than enough to take us all the way home. Fix up the bike a little bit. And as you can see, the route we took all the way through the south. And now we're at that bridge. Pick up that gas can. And be on the last leg of our trip to get the hell out of here.
with nightfall, the freakers come out, and again, I'm not interested in any confrontation. I'm not worried about having a money or anything like that for this region. I just picked up the weapons I wanted to get back to Lost Lake in the fastest possible time. Pretty much just as a showcase that once you get to Lost Lake, you can come here, grab the weapons, head back, continue the story. Okay, here we go. We are approaching our exit point. Now, if you've noticed the debris field that a horde normally leaves behind, there's no need to worry about it in this case because the horde just doesn't exist. It hasn't spawned in at this stage of the game. Only got to worry about that much later. Just checking in, we've got six o'clock on the board. So basically we started around 11 a.m. this morning. So it's taken about seven hours of in-game time to get all the weapons and be at a point as we track back and we can see the route that we took where the fog of war is lifted to come over and grab the weapons and now for the final big moment as we use Deke's legs of steel and a little bit of maneuvering to the left because we can't attack the rock straight on there's a crevice right there on the left that once we get the bike in, he can power his way through. And now we can just get ourselves lined up and head back to Lost Lake. There's a specific route I'm taking here because there are barriers in the same way that the game will stop you from getting to this region. There are barriers, invisible walls, that will prevent you from actually going back the other way. So this particular route through the trees to the left there and then kind of a straight shot but a little a little bit more heading back the way we came. And as we clear the trees, one more surprise. You guessed it, weird snow. Essentially, it's probably the game's mechanic where it can't render the whole map, so it'll render the half that you're active on, and then the other side is not rendered until you've essentially crossed the border. Obviously, during normal gameplay, this is not a scenario you really even have to worry about. If you're curious to find out what happens when you cross the snow, be my guest. Find out. It'll be fun. Okay. The weird snow kind of ends there, so we hang a right at that tree and just ride down the middle between these two, lining up that outcropping that's dead ahead of us as our guide to how we will traverse the final stage and get us back into the Lost Lake region. Quick review of our path. Once we've accessed this part of the mountain, climbing the rocks near the Horde Cave. Now the same kind of invisible shelf exists on this side to head back into the Lost Lake region, but I don't want to die. We're going to use a slightly different maneuver because we're actually passing these trees here and we head down the mountain. We're actually approaching a series of smaller, more manageable cliffs like it. Oh, that ends up clear them out. at one of the blocked crossover points. Suffice it to say, we'd still incur a lot of damage if we just rode off the cliff. But why I'm showing that particular rock formation is so that we can take a more gentle approach coming Shit. back down. Where is it? God Done. Damn, it's, it's gotta be close. Only just a little bit more stress as we try and avoid the freakers. I'm just gonna wait for them to bunch up 
and get away from the main entrance so that I can just make my drop down and sneak by. There's some infestation nests there, but not going to deal. We're on our way home back to Lost Lake. There's some weird snow, but we don't have to worry about that. That just appears to let us know that Come back later. Finish burning we're back in the region that we're supposed to be in. And making our final approach to Lost Lake with some brand new weapons in our arsenal so that we can take out some ambush camps and deal with some marauder encounters that would normally would have given us a little bit of trouble and best of all a pretty kick-ass weapon to deal with some hordes as we drive by the location with the largest horde in the game a little bit of foreshadowing there Only two more bits of business to deal with before we wrap up this video. One of them will be to check up on our elapsed time for the journey once we settle in at the gate. And then to finally answer that nagging question, will the merchant resupply for our newly acquired weapons even though they don't exist in our locker? All right, Johnny, let's check the time. That were some long rides, but checking the clock confirms that we started at 10.57 a.m. and made it back to camp at 8.32, making the whole round trip only 9 hours and 35 minutes in game time. Picked up some amazing weapons to continue the story with, and it's all come down to the moment of truth to see whether we're stuck scavenging for ammo, or if our friendly neighborhood merchant is going to spot us what we need. There we go! Arm to the teeth and have a reliable supply to come back to. Nice. And now for that last check with the US 556 pistol. Can't do anything about that, but the MG45 and the Superior Metal Axe. Please subscribe to let me know a video like this is making an impact in your Days Gone Quest. And check out the channel for more. Thanks for tuning in and Good hunting.